Just 40 years ago, locals in the Quinling Mountain region recall the Chinese giant salamander's abundance in the area's cool mountain streams. Once widespread in central, southwestern, and southern China, the species is now listed as critically endangered and its range is reduced to fragmented populations in the tributaries of the Yellow, Pearl, and Yangtze rivers in east central China. The largest amphibian in the world, adults can reach up to 4 feet in length and weigh 30 pounds or more. There are even reports of a 6-foot, 150-pound individual being sold at a market in 1983. Chinese giant salamanders are endemic to China and one of only three extant members of the family Cryptobranchidae, which includes American hellbenders and the Japanese giant salamander. These animals are patamorphic, meaning they do not fully complete metamorphosis and retain larval features as an adult. They are fully aquatic and breathe cutaneously through fleshy folds of skin on their sides designed to increase surface area, requiring clean water and relatively pristine habitat. The major threat to the Chinese giant salamander is overexploitation of wild populations for use in the farming of animals for food. The poorly regulated industry has also reduced genetic diversity of the species and quickly spreads disease. The pressure farming has put on wild populations has been compounded by the habitat degradation and fragmentation from agricultural pollution, dams, and climate change. In the Quinling Mountain region of the Shaanxi province where the farming industry is centered today, salamanders were once considered dirty and bad luck. Today, however, to the salamander's detriment, they are considered an expensive delicacy. This cultural shift occurred in the mid to late 1970s when migrants from southern China, who traditionally ate the salamander, arrived in the Quinling Mountain region and found a plentiful supply to harvest and sell. As sale and trade developed in the 1970s, demand for Chinese giant salamanders skyrocketed and prices increased by more than 1,000%. With increased demand, trappers began using a synthetic pesticide known as fenpropathrin. The move from manual catching and trapping to pesticide use nearly wiped out local salamander and other wildlife populations. The use of poisons eventually stopped in 1998 when population numbers became too low to make the practice worthwhile. As the Chinese giant salamander population began decreasing and they became harder to catch in the wild, farming of the species began in the late 1990s. The Chinese government sought to regulate the industry with the Wild Animal Protection Law of 1998, which requires licensing for farming, selling, and serving of the Chinese giant salamander. By 2012, the government had licensed 141 farms, which held 2.6 million salamanders. However, many more have been farmed illegally. As a result, the industry has become an essential source of revenue, particularly in impoverished rural regions. Salamander farms frequently trap wild individuals to supplement their stock, further decreasing the wild populations. Though government officials often seize illegally caught salamanders, these individuals are usually sold to licensed farms rather than being released back into the wild. Poachers are unpunished and sometimes even paid for confiscated individuals. As such, the priority is towards sustaining the farming industry rather than wild populations. Only 3% of farmed salamanders are actually sold to restaurants, while the remaining are sold to other farms to further develop the industry. In other words, almost all of the economic revenue from salamander farms is based on a pyramid-style selling scheme. The Chinese government has also invested a considerable amount into the industry, though it requires all licensed farms to release 13% of captive-bred salamanders to supplement wild populations. However, the trade between farms with different sourcing regions has led to genetic homogeneity between populations as there is no genetic management plan in place to ensure variability between populations. Instead, individuals are likely bred for traits favorable to farming rather than survivability. While the Chinese giant salamander is currently considered to be a single species, research conducted over the past 20 years suggests at least five, but possibly eight, distinct species to occur within the Chinese giant salamander population. Between 2007 and 2018, 72,000 captive bred salamanders were released. Genetic analysis shows hybridization of released individuals with haplotypes from multiple populations. This effect can be seen in the figure here, where the historical distribution of distinct salamander populations are shown above, whereas the lower figure displays the current diluted genetic diversity of southern populations, which now contains 70% haplotype B. In addition to the risk of genetic pollution, salamander farming has led to high rates of disease. 
Breeding pools are overstocked and water is circulated among other enclosures and farms without proper filtration. Most years, there are outbreaks of rainavirus on salamander farms throughout the country. Wastewater is then released into local rivers and streams with no treatment to prevent disease or other pollutants. The major culprits contributing to habitat loss and degradation for the Chinese giant salamander are urban development and anthropogenic climate change. Projected increases in development will contribute to significant losses in suitable habitat as well as further fragmentation and pollution. Fragmentation threatens to isolate populations and limit gene flow between them. Urbanization is projected to cause a net loss of 15.2% of suitable salamander habitat by 2050. In addition, climate change models indicate as temperatures rise, we can expect a net loss of 7.1%, culminating in a 22.3% reduction in suitable habitat by 2050. While the projected loss due to climate change is relatively modest, the lack of information on different Chinese giant salamander haplotypes, which are likely adapted to specific altitudinal ranges, suggests the Chinese giant salamander group may be less capable of surviving rapid climate changes than models indicate. While the Chinese giant salamander faces a myriad of threats, there are many potential strategies that may be used to improve its conservation. Outreaching communities most affected by the Chinese giant salamander can be a key tool in educating locals about the conservation status of this animal. As it is interwoven in Chinese culture and, in some cases, local economies, a reframing of the Chinese giant salamander as a wild treasure instead of a delicacy would help to eliminate the demand of the animal for exploitation. To protect wild populations of the Chinese giant salamander, enforcement of laws forbidding the illegal harvest of animals is paramount. While there are already laws in place prohibiting unlicensed acquisition, the practice of illegal collection is common. By enforcing strict punishment on poachers, Chinese government agencies can attempt to eliminate all wild collection of salamanders and be a potential lifeboat for the few existing wild populations. Understanding the taxonomic status of a species before executing management practices such as captive bred release programs and translocation is important in the conservation of an endangered species. Unfortunately, the taxonomic status and cluster genetic diversity of the Chinese giant salamander has not been considered in farming management practices. A separation of the salamander farming industry from current government release practices is essential to addressing issues of homogeneity. Instead, government-run captive rearing programs should be established independent of the farming industry to maintain proper management. Captive breeding programs can begin to select for genetically diverse animals when attempting reintroductions and translocations in an attempt to improve lost genetic diversity. Also, reducing animal densities in captive facilities, both private farms and those designed for conservation management, along with implementation of closely monitored water quality standards, will help to reduce the spread of pathogens. The major roadblock in striking a balance between conservation and sustainable exploitation of Chinese giant salamanders is their cultural significance as a culinary item and locals' economic dependence on the farming industry. Nonetheless, even without dismantling the farming and trade of Chinese giant salamanders, the Chinese government has a significant opportunity to improve the viability of wild populations through stricter use of regulation and effective captive breeding and release programs.